Can you explain to me what it is in a rap game with the contracts? Like, I know a lot of rappers, like, I think me going through something right now where he only dropping on YouTube. So I don't understand that. Like, is it, like, do you sign a contract, like, saying that, like, I give y'all 30 songs? Or is it, like, four albums? And then you want to get out of your contract early, kind of like what a football player does. Like, I mean, he got, like, four years left in his rookie contract, and he goes to the table early? Same thing. Same thing. You sign a four-album deal. You get it cracking after two albums. Now you're just not down for the same pay structure that was there. And depending on how you came in, right? So Meek's story is, yo, I signed to Atlantic, uh, Maybach Music. I got shit rocking. And I introduced Atlantic to Roddy Ridge. I introduced Atlantic to whoever, whatever other artist that came and generated nine figures for you. Yeah. Yeah, I need to be treated a little better. And if that don't happen, then most artists want to leave with their rights and monetize their own brand themselves. And that's where Meek is now. He's on some indie shit. So he's serving his music to the places that reap him the most benefit. And on the flip side of that, you're not going to see the same push that the major labels give you when they spend all the money. Hmm. Sure. I feel like that's crazy because, like, I would I would think you would just fulfill the contract while you're still in, like, your prime of making music. Because if you fight it out for a certain amount of years, how like how do you know you're going to be hot by the time you fight it out? And then you're not even having the label kind of, like, push you in a sense to where, like, you're not even getting, like, the media and, the, and like, everything that comes behind because they got to market you. Well, hot is a myth. Like, do you want to be hot or you want to be paid? Because mm. 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 you get one or the other. Very few get both. Mm. So you can be hot. The label will get you hot. And you probably won't be the most paid. They'll get you hot, and it's your job to go out there and fucking bring back the revenue based off you being hot, which is go fight for the tour money, the show money, go get yours outside the street. But from music and the brand deals and all of this shit, no, we run the shit. We 60 it out. But I, I'm thinking niggas just sitting back making music, and you feel me? Yeah. They sitting back making music and everything else. Like, like basically, like your label call you and be like, hey, you got a show. Hey, you got this. Do you want to do this or whatever like that? Of course, you got to say so. But I'm thinking like, you know, you go in the studio, you make your album, everything like that. They market it, put it out, and then they do the groundwork of like going to go find you shows. That's your responsibility as an artist. Uh, Well, no, the label don't really care about your shows unless it's some big tour. But they want money for slice. Well, depending on your deal, they're going to get the money regardless. Mm -hmm. That's That's what made Taylor Swift so iconic, huh? Because I'm just like, my whole thing is, it's like, you say they want to leave with their rights. But if you have the name, I, but I guess that's the rights. Huh? You can't drop under Meek Mill. You only have that. Like, it's almost you got to create a new persona or something, right? Or or you you per- personally can't drop, like, because Taylor kind of left. But I know she was looking for a, what did she look for? Taylor could do what she want. But I'm saying when she re-recorded her music. And she, and she can't. Because that's what her situation was. Plenty of other artists are re-recording their, their, their music. Yes. You don't know about it. You don't hear about it. Nobody's buying it. Mm. Nobody's buying it. If I want, should I go through this now with the, the oldies? Alexander O'Neill, if you were here tonight, the version that I listen to is not available on streaming, but the version that he re-recorded is. And as an artist, you want to champion that. All the money goes to him now. But truth be told... The original, we want to hear the old one. The first one, for sure. Your voice ain't the same. This music ain't the same. Because you have to change something about it for you to be able to re-record it. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, it's not the same song. It don't mean the same thing. Mm-hmm. I could go re-record Pump It Up right now. But when Pump It Up comes on, I hear 21, 22-year-old me you in my bag. You could not drop a slap like that right now. Bro. I mean... You couldn't drop, but you couldn't go in there. And I don't, pump, I mean, pump. Can we get one <laughs> Not, oh, at, not, at, not at 44. <laughs> oh, not, at, not at 44. We can't get those, 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 those. But if I was all on some money shit, I would go re-record it. So now when the people are looking for Pump It Up, I can pitch them mine okay. and not the labels. But Joe, to, uh, They drop Pump It Up that. at the stadium. So stop playing with my man. So what's Joe, the alias? Yeah, Big Joe. Joe. Yeah, you know, yeah, fuck they talking about. You know, yeah. when, uh, you know when artists <laughs> drop shit up under the alias? Like, have you ever heard of that? It's like an alias. Prince. Like Gunners is like Giovanni or, or whatever like that. Uh, I don't know about Gunner's situation. Yeah, nah, but I'm saying like like people drop stuff under the alias and like does is it part of their contract still? Or is it just like, oh nah, this is a whole new me, I rebranded. Well it depends. I don't know. I know when Prince did it, it was to get around 
a contract. Absolutely. I know when people do it, they do it to get around. I don't know if Gunner has a situation like that. I personally, These niggas might just have aliases with, all right, you still are attached to your one record label. We don't care about yeah, your alias. Yeah. You got I think he dropped it here. for like overseas. Giovanni, because he was like, they call me Giovanni overseas. So I think like his Giovanni music is for like overseas. Like, well, know. and then some some artists, I mean, if you got it like that, should uh, negotiate differently for international sales. Mm. Like when we hear about how, how much these albums sell, sell, we only talking about domestically. Mm. We never ever talk about what it did in Europe or Africa Everybody or Australia. It's money. It's, crazy, it's money. Bro. One song is generating so much money, so much money. Mm. And normally when artists get hip to it and they get aware, they want to fix it. They want to fix it. Mm. I feel like the lack of like not having mixtapes is just like it hurts. It just it's like ruining the, the, hard, it's like man. ruining at least our genre, hip hop in my genre. They my fixed opinion. it. They regulated. <laughs> Same thing government did with weed is what the music labels did with fucking Ain't that Zao here no more. You got that it's over. Yeah, Lime Genetic bar, and, nigga, you got the burn. I never burn. I'm saying I just feel like as a too. rapper, it was like it was like it's like now it's like y'all ain't got no preseason. Everything y'all put out is 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 now well, for streams. Everything is is judged on Billboard. Every single thing you used to be able to just hop on somebody's shit and then just you know I mean rip it up and then you know let it go. But that was the put on though. I think a lot of people are missing that, like the the get familiar, the 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 um what's the guy? What's uh from the DJ from Philly? Um, Cosmic Cosmic Kev. Yeah, Cosmic Cab. Cosmic like Kev. all, Cosmic all those Cosmic things, bro. Like those mixtapes when people just used to used to hear Clue just drop a bomb, boom, 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 and then somebody going crazy on the track. You like, yo, who is this? Oh no, this person's about to be the next person up. They they on the label. They doing X, Y, and Z. Like I do miss that. I miss that a lot because I remember you know you going you know going to the barbershop like. Yo, your pop pick up a CD. It's another junk tucked in the back. Oh, this the, the one. Heard, like uh, okay, like I remember the first time I was hearing Meek on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, in the day. it was before Make Him Say. It was another joint. Yeah, y'all yeah, think uh, like Apple Music, Spotify, and stuff was like the best thing to happen to rap? No, worse. Uh, well, you I'm made sorry. it worse because at first it was LimeWire. You feel for, me? You had to burn the CDs. For, was rappers getting paid off LimeWire for yeah, burning CDs. And shit? For artists, I think it was. Oh, it you was, it was. Are you a, are you a bootleg? <laughs> hey, I'm hey. I can just hear it in your voice. You <laughs> Everybody was. Nigga. You bigging up hey, all this shit, hey, bro. <laughs> hey Joe, you might have missed out on some paint fucking with a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Lime I'll wire. probably owe you a few dollars. Lime nigga. wire was blue. <laughs> 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 Lime wire was definitely oh, blue. Shit. You know what I'm saying, hey. yeah. Apple I'm saying. and these niggas is bootleg. Everybody, everybody's bootlegging now, right? There's so much value in music discovery, like Tim is talking about with the Clue tapes and Cosmic Kevin. The ground level is where music discovery was happening, and the label heads seen that shit and was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, let's send the feds to drama. Let's fuck the same thing they did to Napster is what they did to yeah, facts. The, the DJs. Yeah. So now we run shit. Yeah. So playlisting is how music will be discovered. We're going to run and own playlisting. We'll break the labels off with a piece of it, and we'll work in conjunction with each other. Now the streets have absolutely no power at all. Mm. Yep. Man, what, who are the Jeez. young boys that you like? Mm-hmm. Like, who, like, in the new, in the new game, who do you see, you, like, you know what I mean? That you like, like who the who the new young artists that you listen to? Do you listen? Do you do, are you not? You don't listen to none of them, huh? I listen to it if it's hot enough, like the stuff like that you can't avoid. Like when I'm in the strip club, like Cash Cobain, like yeah, he got that. He's it's sick. a problem. When that come on, yes, when that come on, see, but you can't avoid that. And he's talented. He done did it so many times. Sure. I just try to avoid the the, the one trick ponies or the, or the mm. niggas that catch a little wave and then it's over. So yeah. you got to keep doing it. You got to be consistent. Like I fuck with ESTG hard when he came out, and now it just has slowed down a little bit. But he's proven himself to me already. Fucking, uh, I like that nigga. Everybody laugh at me when I say it. I like that nigga. What's his name? Big Boogs. That nigga shit is hard. Mm-hmm. He's hard. Mm-hmm. Boss Man D-Lo. Yeah. yeah. That's what he be. be, be. Hard. Boss Man. Mm-hmm. Nah, he's, he's hard. Yeah, for so, sure. So, I just know when I hear one of the new niggas what I like and what I don't like. Man. That's it. <laughs> what I said about Boss? I ain't you said, you said Boss Man was a fly by night nigga. No, Yo, not that. I did, that's, I did, that's I did. I, heard, I mean, it, but 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 let me say this: the boss man, get in with me. That's forever <laughs> going to be a part of the win. No, for sure. That's forever part of the win. That was our joint. So like, yeah. you mean we turned up to that joint though? I, I so, do think it's funny uh, when I watched you at uh, Yadi uh, uh, interview and you was telling them that you you know you would grind him up bar for bar. 
It's funny because I really feel like uh, like Lil Yachty, like the Joe Budden of this generation. Tell me more. Because I feel like, like, so I got a lot of homies that was from New York that used to always tell me, like, they like they listened to a lot of your music, and I feel like you were very inspirational. Like, you inspired, I don't want, I'm not to be clickbaking none of that shit, but you inspired the Drakes. You inspired a lot of those, you know, people in that new generation. People, it was like the people who knew, knew you had a different, you had a certain wave, especially, like, rapping emotionally, like, talking about, you know, the, the different things that you was rapping about and just, like, the kind of genre that you was kind of hitting on early on was a little bit ahead of his time. I feel like Yachty himself is inspiring. But for the mainstays, so, like, when like when you was rapping, a lot of people was like, oh, this nigga rapping about his girl. Why the fuck we care about that? Whereas, yeah. though, now it's like Yachty, the way he rapping, and most of us that listen to rap, or a lot of people that listen to rap kind of look at it, and they, like, they'll put it in a box. Now it's kind of, he's, he's kind of stood the test of time a little he's bit. He's escaped the box. But mm -hmm. at first, people was kind of like, oh, no, he's just that, but... I feel like he has that same type of niche, like uh, like cult following that y'all have, like inspirate, like in tar especially in terms of like. Influence. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. That was the hot take. I thought that was gonna make you mad. No, nah. <laughs> I see bits and pieces of me in a lot of the newer acts. They just would never expect that from me, and it catches me off guard because I would never expect it from them. Like, for me to see a piece of me in Yachty and what he's trying to do. I was like, I was, I related a lot to Triple X and his story and what he was doing and how he was going about it. His death really, really, really fucked me up. Rest in peace, Triple X. Uh, and he was a nigga when I first heard. It, I was like, man, get this little young nigga fucking fuckity fuck bullshit out of here. <laughs> and and then I just kept vibing and kept yeah. vibing and kept vibing. And then I spoke to him. Then the albums, he was on some DMX, M, Button, Emo, and nobody got it but the people that got it. And it was so many of them. So yeah, some of these young niggas juice world. Like the ability for newer acts to be able to be vulnerable on their first single. To say, hey, I love her and I miss her a lot. And I'm self-medicating because she left. Like that type of shit is fly. When when I when it was time for me to come up with my first single, we couldn't do none of that shit. Nigga, make something that's gonna get on the radio and get a spin. Anything else, put that shit on your album. We don't wanna hear it. Couldn't do it. Even the 90s, the singles they was able to put out in the 90s was like, nigga, y'all could do that. Any of the, if I rule the world, whatever they was doing in the 90s. Like, you just oh. feel like your era, you were just put in such a box. My era was the worst era to ever get a record deal, and I tell people that all the time because my era was right at the end of million-dollar budgets for everybody, video, recording budget, styling budgets, the 90s, right at the tip of the 90s where everybody was balling, execs and stealing from the budget to, oh, shit, Napster and LimeWire, and now, oh, shit, music, CD sales, CD sales, decline. CDs. Yes, decline, oh, my yeah. God, the labels, how are we going to keep the lights on? It was, and now I had a record deal. So, yeah, people were still selling when I was out, but the music industry, much like today, was shifting and going somewhere else. So then that's when ringtones came about. Now you're looking at the labels like, oh, you niggas are trying to get a buck from anywhere, yeah. boy. And the ringtone era kind of carried them up until streaming. Mm. Right. Mm. So now we're in a shift, too, with all of this AI shit and how will music be consumed in the next five to ten years? What's the next phase oh, after music. streaming, which is AI? When, but how will we adapt or work with who'll lose a job or everybody lost a job in the music business. This shit is fucked up out here, but we generating so much money. So at some point, niggas got to come together and figure out how to funnel some of that back to where it should go. And we ain't there yet. And we won't get there because of niggas like speed. Who <laughs> you want to talk about Apple and Spotify but and I'm all, saying, you just all said the places that, that won't pay it? us. There's nothing hey, to talk Apple about streaming? at a table no, no, where no, no. niggas don't pay us. So it's Apple streaming. But it's yes. not. You just stated that streaming saved damn near the rap game because you said that. No, 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 no. You just I said streaming the, saved the music business. The most that notoriety of music. Like it put it on a different platform. Yeah, they, they thought that this shit was dying and would be over yeah. soon. And once, once Napster proved what they proved, yeah. the music industry got together like they did after Master P got that big deal and was like, okay, how can we make sure this never happens again? Yeah. How can we regulate this? That's all that's happening. 